Ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolutely beautiful day and we're here yet again to reveal something that's tremendously spectacular. We've seen it before, but this time it's different. It's in the Maserati of SUVs. Now this car is something that has been referred to as a Trofeo. We've seen the Ghibli Trofeo, we've seen the Quattro Porta Trofeo, but today we're looking at the Maserati Levante Trofeo. So guys, I've had a few comments in the last few videos saying that you'd love to hear the sound of the engine, and I know it's my fault. This is a lifestyle review of a car, I know that, but given there is a Ferrari collaborated engine, a V8 in this car, the least we can do is let you hear it sound. So um, we're gonna give you some noise. So first here. Okay, you want some more? Here's some more. And now's the startup sound. Okay, that's it. Now, the lifestyle review. So, the Levante Trofeo is, is very different to the other Trofeos in the sense of it's the first one that's a different profile set above the ground. It's also the other Trofeos are rear wheel drive, whereas this is an all wheel drive SUV as it has the SUV capabilities. But the, surprisingly, it's actually the fastest of all of them. It goes to 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds. The Ghibli is 4.3 seconds and the Quattro Porta is 4.5 seconds. So this one's actually the fastest of the lot and it's definitely the most practical. Right, on the Trofeo, once again, we have the Seata, on the Seata logo, there's the, the, the red lightning bolt across, giving you an indication of its power that lies beneath. We have the Italian flag once again, the detailing which is consistent across the, all the Trofeo ranges if you've seen the Quattro Porta and the Ghibli one and it also has Trofeo written on the side there with some red detailing on the air intake vents and this one unlike the Quattro Porta Trofeo but a bit like the Ghibli Trofeo has the air intake vents on the bonnet giving it that real aggressive feel but the thing I love about the Levante is and even though it is an SUV it's a very uh, aggressively compact SUV so it has that real lovely aerodynamic line to it it's a beautiful vehicle and it drives that way and I can't wait to get it on the road. Now, once again, I have to apologize as this engine's a thing of beauty, yet I haven't shown it to you on the last two Trofeos. Now, the, the history behind this engine, it first appeared in the 4.2 litre Quattro Porta back in 1963, but this engine's actually an extension of the one that was launched in the Levante Trofeo about three years ago, because actually the first Trofeo was actually Levante and it was actually a V8, but they had some things they didn't quite like about the engine, so they worked together with the Ferrari team to create what is now the new V8 that you see in this Trofeo today. So today we're in the Maserati Levante Trofeo and although I've recently reviewed the Ghibli Trofeo and the Quattro Porta Trofeo, this is arguably the most different of the lot because it's a different ride position but also it's a different chassis, it's a different feel. It has many different features that the other Trofeos didn't have so it feels like a completely new experience if I'm being honest. But one of the things especially that, that is noticeable is the driving system. I mentioned that the other ones, Ghibli and Quattro Porta, are rear wheel drive. This is actually an all wheel drive. It uses the Q4 intelligent all wheel drive system. So what happens is that in normal driving conditions, it actually positions the power to the rear of the car to give you that sort of like um, more normal driving experience. And in tough conditions, it can do 50-50 or even front or all at the same time. So the, the good thing about this vehicle is it gives you the option to have that full control that an SUV gives you that family safety, that whole sort of almost normal drive, dare I say it, but then it's got under the hood, it's got that 3.8 litre V8 twin turbo Ferrari collaborated Maserati engine that just gives you the full power whenever you, you need it. I mean, it's a 730 newton meters of torque and it actually, even at very low revs, it gives you a lot of power. So even at 1500 RPM, you're still getting a lot of power through the engine, through the wheels, between 2,500 and, and about 5,000 RPMs where you get the real turbo, but it absolutely flies. It does have a top speed of 186 miles per hour, which is a bit less than the other two, which are the top around just over 200 miles an hour, but that's still plenty quick enough. 
And as I mentioned earlier, it has an acceleration to 0-60 or 4.1, which is actually quicker than both the others. So this thing is an absolute beast. Right now, as I put the car into sport mode, activate sport mode on the Levante, the thing that you notice, A, obviously the engine noise changes, but the also something different is the ride height actually lowers down to make the car more aerodynamic and kind of stiffens up the chassis a little bit. Much like the other ones, it has the sky hook suspension, the double wishbone suspension, which obviously automatically adjusts to make the ride, try and predict the, the curvature of the road, etc. But the ride height difference makes Trofeo stand out much more than the other counterparts in terms of its, it's just a different kind of drive. You do notice it has a slight more of a, I wouldn't say roll, but you do feel it high on the road, definitely. You have that sort of pronounced driving position, which I quite like actually because although it is an SUV, it's a compact SUV, so it's actually quite, it's almost like it's been squished. That adds to its sort of aggressive looking profile. So it actually looks quite sporty anyway. We can't drive the Levante and not talk about its off-roading capabilities. Yes, it's an SUV, but it's also a genuine off-roader. I remember when the Levante first launched, I actually took it on a full-on off-road course up these almost I'd say mud sliding rocks everything and the car completely took it it has this adjustable ride height five different settings so you can reduce the height it has this normal ride height which you use in most conditions but then when you put the sport mode in a mode on it immediately adjusts it one lower down to give it a more aerodynamic profile but also you can raise it so for the off-roading you can go up actually two settings which gives it a lot higher clearance of debris and as such it's even got these off-roading buttons as well, which you can press, which pretty much lets the car, dare I say, actually drive you in these off-road conditions. I remember I was going down this like muddy, muddy sort of slope and then just let the car actually take me down, literally walk me down this, this seemingly impossible slope. So it is a genuine off-roader, um, it has to be said. And another thing to consider actually in terms of, is the size of it. Now, when you're considering all three vehicles, it's about five meters in length, which is a bit bigger than the Ghibli Trofeo, but a bit shorter than the, the Quattro Porto Trofeo. And you do feel that, not in necessarily the scale of it in terms of its feel, but there is a little bit less legroom in the back of the Levante Trofeo. I'd say it reminds me a bit more of the Ghibli in terms of its, if its space in the back rather than the Quattro Porto. The Quattro Porto is king on that. But where the SUV comes into its own is its boot space, it's cavernous. You can pretty much put anything in there that you want or that you would need to put in there. So that is a definite win on this account. But I mean, an SUV generally, I mean, I was looking around at different competitors. You've got the Porsche Cayenne S Turbo, the Range Rover Sport, etc. Because I'll be honest, this is not a cheap car. It's 150,000 pounds. The entry Levante comes in around about, you know, 60 odd thousand pounds. So it's an expensive car. So you're looking at other supercars, but then when you get into the bracket of Italian SUV supercar luxury, I don't really think you have another viable option. Yes, people go, okay, there's a Lamborghini Urus. Yeah, you can talk about the Lamborghini Urus, but I don't think you can put it in the same category as a, as a daily drive SUV, which this Levante Trofeo is. The Urus is still very much a supercar. It's not something that, yeah, you could put the kids in the back, but it's not really a car you want to be doing the school running. I mean, whereas this car is definitely comfortable. It has the Piena Fiore leather seats, which are really, really soft, really supple, not often used in cars and actually adapt to your body shape as the leather grows in character, <laughs> as it warms to your body shape, etc. It is a very comfortable car. It's a car you could drive long distances and not feel it. But it's a car also that is important to say that is just genuinely a lot of fun. I think some people forget when you drive fast, and you have these naught to 60s of such short time. People always think, oh, you got to drive fast all the time. No. What it is, is the acceleration is fun. So I remember the other day I was driving and it was about only going about 30 miles an hour, but I had a lot of fun getting to the 30 miles an hour. I have a lot of fun getting to the 40 miles an hour. I have a lot of fun getting to the 50 miles an hour. And that is enough for the day-to-day -day enjoyment. It still puts a smile on my face. I remember saying about the Ghibli Trofeo that every time I step inside it, it puts a smile on my face. And the same has to be said for this one as well. With the Trofeo models, they all have the sport mode and they also have a Corsa mode. And uh, we've had a bit of frost and it's been a little bit icy yesterday, so I wasn't gonna do it, but actually it's dried up and the sun's come out and it's been a beautiful day. So if you just hold the sport button down, so you press it once, it turns into sport, you press it again, hold it down, 
puts in the Corsa mode. And as you can see on the screen, you can actually see, it tells you that the aero ride height has been achieved. So that's been changed, but also you can see the acceleration profile has changed now. And that's sort of now the more playful drives back into play. The tracks control signs off. So you can see that those limiting features, the safety features in terms of its traction control are still there to a degree because it has the intelligent all-wheel drive system, but it just means that it allows you to have a bit more fun with the car. Okay, so how to sum up the Levante Trofeo. Now, the Levante Trofeo for me is probably the most practical of all the Trofeo models because it just does everything. A bit more comfortable in the sense of the ride height and the scale and the size of it, you know, it's easy to get in and out of. It's got the off-roading capabilities, so terrible weather you'll find there. Not that the others will struggle, but being an all-wheel drive and a genuine off-roader, it will just cope better with that. But then at the same time, it has the fastest acceleration of the lot. So like, you know, as I mentioned earlier, in inner seat conditions, it still is pretty nimble, pretty agile, pretty fun. And, and even though you're not necessarily gonna be speeding, it's just fun to drive, you know, generally, because of that acceleration, that power that's immediately at your, at your grasp. So, you know what, I'm not gonna pick one. I'd say that for different characters, for the complete family man, Levante Trofeo is the one for you. For the ultimate businessman, Quattroporto Trofeo is the one for you. And if you're for the, like, the more kind of business exec, young executive, I'd say the Ghibli Trofeo is the one for you. But either way, whichever one you choose, you can't go wrong. Congratulations to Maserati on the Trofeo range. You smashed it out of the park with all three. And now I'm just gonna have a bit more fun, put it in Corsa and drive.